Hello world, my name is Nick360, and welcome to the Complete Beginner's Guide to Prison Architect. So this is the one video series if you watch on its own, you should be able to understand almost everything about Prison Architect that there is to know. So the day I'm recording this is the day that the full version came out. So this is the full version of Prison Architect and may be updated in the future, but for now we're going to assume that this is the final version of the game. So when you start up Prison Architect for the first time, you have two options. Either it's going to start off with a blank map, which is what you can see here on my screen right now, or it's going to start off with the story mode. The story mode serves as the built-in tutorial. I highly recommend to new players start with the campaign and play through the entirety of the campaign. If you open a blank map, you can still play the story mode anytime you like. In order to do this, we're going to go to the main menu, and you can click on this icon here, this little house icon, or you can hit escape. And these are all our options for the game. So campaign is the story mode. Cutscenes are the story, the actual story in the story mode. You can save your progress in the story mode, and you can load it here. Create new prison is an option for allow you to create a new prison from scratch. So this is kind of what I have here. This is empty plot, and I can uh, I can fill it in with buildings, and I can start building my prison right here. Uh, and then I can load and save prisons here as well. Extras here in extras is the new escape mode, so you can load up any prison that you've built or any prison that someone else has built, and you can try and play as a prisoner and escape from it. I'm going to run two tutorial series on this channel. One of them is going to go through the story mode. The other is going to go through starting from a new prison from scratch. This tutorial is going to cover starting a prison from scratch. If you want to begin our journey through the story mode, you can click a link right here. Just click it, or if you're on a mobile device, there's a link in the description. Otherwise, if you want to start in the sandbox mode, and you want to just start building your prison right away, and you're like, no, I don't want to watch the tutorial, I don't want to watch and sit through those cutscenes, I just want to start right now, we're going to create a new prison. In the Create New Prison, there is a bunch of options. The first option is the size of your prison. So there's small, medium, and large. We're going to go small because that runs the fastest. Turning off Fog of War allows you to see everything that's happening in your prison all the time. This is really good when you're learning how to play the game to see what's happening. Generating forests will cause large clumps of trees to appear, and we don't want that for our first experience. For our first time playing through the game, we don't want to have to deal with that, so we're going to turn that off. Generate lakes and buildings or another obstacles in the forms of big patches of water and buildings that you have to demolish in order to make room for your prison. Both of these are annoying for a first playthrough, so we're going to have them turned off. Failure conditions are going to be turned off because we don't want to have to suffer for our mistakes. If we mess up, well that's part of the learning process. We don't want to be punished for that. Gangs. For a first playthrough, I cannot state this enough, you do not want gangs or events in your prison. These will make it super hard to manage your prison and figure out how each of the systems work. And finally, unlimited funds. If this is your very first time playing Prison Architect, which I assume it is, it might be nice to turn on unlimited funds. However, I'm going to turn it off to show you how you build a prison without running out of money. And finally, in Choose Your Warden, there's different wardens you can choose from. Each of them have different effects on your prisoners in prison, but I'm just going to start off with the default warden, the warden. We play and now we have this plot of land. Looking at the UI, there's a bunch of important elements that we can just skim through very quickly. Up at the top left, we have our to-do list. The to-do list has either things that we need to know that are going to be happening soon. For example, the prisoner intake, we're going to get some prisoners soon. Or it's things that we've set out to do, goals that we've created for ourselves, and that have some reward if we complete those goals. Here is how long we've been playing, day one. Here is how much money we've earned. And right now we start off with $30,000. This is how much money we're making per day. This is the time of the day. This is the regime. Later we'll be able to control the regime to optimize our prison experience. Right here we have a bunch of options. Pause, pl play, fast forward, and super fast forward. And you can click these buttons here to change how fast the game progresses. So as you see, super fast forward makes all these tricks go by fast. But if I hit play, they go back at a normal speed. And if I hit pause, they stop. And time is frozen on pause. Now we can zoom in with the mouse wheel. So we zoom up, it zooms in, we zoom out, it'll scroll out. Now we're going to want to move around, so let's zoom in a little bit. There's two different ways to move it around. There's WASD. So W goes up, S is down, A is left, D is right. You can also use the arrow keys and just the arrow that's pointed will let you move in that direction. In addition, you can also move your mouse to the edge of the screen, so you can move your mouse up, move your mouse left, 
move your list down, etc, etc. Now in the bottom right, we have this clipboard called Reports. Clicking on Reports opens up this clipboard here, and we can move it around, we can click and drag this around, this is nice to be able to move it around, I'm just going to move it in the very center. In each of these tabs, looking on the left of this clipboard, there's, each of these tabs is different information that is useful for our prison. So this is the management side of it. So staff is how many workers we have, and as a manager we need to know how many workers we have. Prisoners is how many prisoners we have, right now we have none, and that's what we want. This is how many prisoners we're taking in. Right now we're just going to turn off prisoner intake, so we're not going to worry about prisoners. We're going to build the basic prison first, then we're going to worry about prisoners. Then once we have a facility for the prisoners to come in, we're going to allow prisoners to come in. We're going to skip over jobs because that's a debug tool for the developers. We're going to go to grants, and we're going to select basic detention center. Now if we click it, it's added to our to-do list. These requirements are based off the human needs. So there is a human need to eat. There's a human need to sleep. There's a human need to use the restroom. There's a human need to bathe. There's a human need to exercise. All of these actions are actions that prisoners need to do. And in order for them to do it, we need to build the facilities for them to do it. So we're gonna X out of our reports clipboard. We're gonna ignore these red buttons here. And we're going to ignore all these blue buttons for now, except foundation. Foundations means buildings. We're going to build a building so we can complete these objectives for our basic detention center. Now you can build the building anywhere on this open plot of land. You don't want it too close to the road because there's going to be stuff that we're going to be putting in there later that we don't want to get in the way of. And the further away from the road, the further it is away from our workers. And the workers have to pick up the supplies from this delivery zone here. So you see this checkerboard pattern that the workers are standing in? That is deliveries, and you can see it labeled up along the side. It's called deliveries. We also have garbage down here. So deliveries are going to be delivered from these trucks, and these same trucks are going to take garbage that a prison will eventually produce, and it will take them away from our prison. So we're going to leave a little bit of space from the road, but not too far away. So we've picked a foundation. We're going to click, and we're going to hold, and we're going to drag. The bigger this building is, the more expensive it's going to be. And the smaller it is, the less expensive it is, but the harder it is to fit stuff inside of it. A nice balance I found is to be 11 wide and 23 long. A size that I find works really well is 11 wide and 23 tall. And when we release, it's going to queue up this building. Now that we queued up this building, we have told our workers to build the foundation for this building. When I hit play, Workers are going to bring supplies from these trucks over to our building. They're going to take those supplies and use that to build our foundation. Now as you can see, in red words right here, we need an entrance for our building. Now to build an entrance, we're going to need a door. And doors are found in objects. We click objects, and we can. there's many different objects we can have, and you can maybe see the door right here, but I'm just going to look for door. These are all the different doors in the game. We're going to use a plain, simple wooden door. We're just going to put it right on this edge here, on this wall, and we're going to right click. And there we go. So now we queued up the door. Now a worker is eventually going to receive a door from the truck in deliveries, and there we go. And they're going to construct the door right here. And once the door is in place and the rest of the foundation is in place, the building will be constructed. But let's say you're constructing a building and you accidentally release it when you don't want to. And this isn't the right size. We want it to be the same size as the building to the right. We can right click on the building to cancel that building. Now that the foundation is placed and the door has been placed on the edge of the building, the walls of the building will automatically be placed for you and the inside will be a nice concrete floor. And this option right here, automatic light placement, means that there's going to be lights automatically put periodically throughout the building. So this makes sense, you're going to want the lights spread out through your building so you can see. So as you can also see, it's dark on this top half of the building because there's no light coming through. There's walls in the way, and the only light's coming through this door at the bottom. So at the top of this building, it's very dark. Now you can see here the workers are beginning to install the lights. However, it isn't really lighting up the room. That's because it has no power. The lights need power before they can work. Now in order to get power, we're going to need to go to Utilities. Utilities has our power station. When we go to Utilities, everything turns gray. What this means is this is the underground view of the prison. So this is what the prison looks like if we were 1 to 2 meters below the surface. And we can see that the outline of our building 
is right here. We can see the outline of our building even underground, so the walls extend downward a little bit. Now, we want our power station, and we can see here there's a 1 on the power station. That means we own one, so we don't have to spend the money to get a new power station because we already have one. Make sure you leave plenty of room around your power station because power stations can set things on fire if they get too close. So we're going to create a space a little distance away from our building. We're going to plunk it down right here. Also, to increase the power capacity of our power generator, we're going to put a capacitor. The capacitor has to be one meter away from the power station. So right here, if we put a capacitor here, we queue that up, this will increase the power of this power station. We can also do kitty corner, but we can't do it here. That won't work. We can't do it here. Definitely not here. That, that won't work. It has to be directly adjacent. So we're going to build three, and that should satisfy our needs for a while. So now that our power station is built, we can see the power on the left, and right now nothing's wired up to it, so there's almost no power being used. To get power into our building, we are going to left click next to our power station, we're going to drag a line, we're going to bring it inside our building. Now even though there's a wall here, our workers will be able to get to the station just fine, as long as it's only one meter thick. If it's wider than one meter thick, workers may have trouble installing the equipment. Now as you can see it's getting built and once it's connected to the power station it flows bright green as the energy flows through the wires. Now these wires aren't connected to the power station so they're not glowing green yet. Not until this one's connected then all of them connected and the power flows through this wires here. Now as you can see all our lights are not actually directly touching this power. However all the lights receive power because it flows from this generator here through these cables and they can easily be connected to these cables right here, these thick cables. We can see that the power doesn't extend all the way to this upper corner of the building. So we need to extend our cables upwards a little bit so that the power fills up the entire building. So anything that needs electrical power in this room will be able to be wired up appropriately. There we go, now the whole building is filled with power. Now to exit utilities mode, we can hit escape. And escape will bring us back to this ordinary mode. Exiting utilities mode, we can see all of these supplies left over from the construction of the building. Ugh, don't they all look ugly? Well, we can fix that very easily. We can create a spot to store the extra supplies left over from projects like this. In order to do that, we need to designate a space to do that. To designate a space to have a purpose, we go to rooms. Now, in rooms, each of these squares represents a function that can be served in the prison. The ones necessary for our basic detention center are highlighted with these bright white squares. So these are the facilities that we will need to build in order for our prison to be functional. Now, to get rid of these extra supplies, we can build a storage facility. And all it is is just a square where we're going to put our extra supplies when we're done with them. So we're going to go click on storage and then we're going to left click and hold and drag. We're going to designate a space. When we let go, the checkerboard pattern will appear. And we hit play, and this is storage. And now workers will automatically take our extra equipment and move it into storage. If we speed up time, we can see that they're going to pick up these extra supplies and they're going to move it into the storage room. So now we have our building here, and we're going to want to put stuff in it. The first facility we should have is our holding cell. Any prisoner that doesn't have their own cell is going to be put into the holding cell. Since we do not have any cells, all our prisoners are going to go into the holding cell. So we're going to click holding cell, we're going to click and drag, and we're going to make our 9x9 holding cell. When we hit play, we see that this room has a glowing red triangle with a caution sign in between. Moving our mouse over this room, we can see the requirements that are necessary for the room to serve its function. So the function we want it to serve is holding cell. However, in order to serve the function of a holding cell, it needs more than just simply being laid out a square in the ground. It needs something else. And because it's a cell, it needs to be enclosed, which means there needs to be walls around it. So right here, there's, this op there's a big opening right here. That's not enclosed. In addition, it needs a toilet and a bench. The bench is really easy. We go to objects and search for bench. There we go. Here's the bench. We place one here, place one here. We have our benches there. You may notice that when we are zoomed in on a room, some of the objects are highlighted. The objects that are highlighted are objects that are supposed to belong in the room. And sure enough, 
toilet is one of these objects. So we're going to put in our corner, we're going to put a toilet here. The holding cell is going to serve as the cell for all our prisoners. The cell is where the prisoner rests at night. And so in order to serve the function more properly, even though it isn't necessary for the room to serve its function, we are going to put beds in so the prisoners can sleep. We're going to place a bed here, here, here. And we're just going to build three rows of beds. And if you can actually click and hold, you can actually create multiple copies of the object. So I just created a couple rows of beds. So looking here, we have 12 beds. So we have room for 12 prisoners to come in once the holding cell is complete. Now to finish off the requirements for the holding cell, we're going to need to build a wall. To build a wall, we're going to go to materials. There's different walls, but I'm going to choose brick wall because that is the type of foundation I use. So that is the wall that matches this building here. And we're going to build this wall here. And actually, I'm going to extend it out more than I need to. And then when I let go, it's going to queue up this wall. And I hit play, our workers are going to try and build this wall. But before I let them, I'm going to cancel this wall by right clicking and dragging. And I'm going to cancel that wall there. So now the workers are going to build what has been queued up. And there we go, we have built our holding cell. And as you can see here, we have room for 12 prisoners. And currently we have zero prisoners, so zero of 12. Looking at our list for the basic detention center, we need a shower. I found through my experience, it's very convenient to build a shower very close to the cells where the prisoners are. So we're going to put a shower here. And it, showers don't have to be very big. So we're going to go to room. We're going to go to shower. Here we go. Here is shower. And we're just going to create a small room here right next to our holding cell. And we look at the room requirements and the only requirements is a shower head. So we go to objects, we type in shower head. And sure enough, there it is. So we're going to want to put a shower head on the wall. But I could put it like this, but that doesn't look right. I want to turn it around so it's connected to the wall. In order to do that, there's two ways. You can hit R to rotate it around or you can hit the middle mouse button to rotate around. And then when I click, I get a shower head. So I hit R, 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 I can spin it around, I can spin it around whichever way I want, and I can click and drag, cancel this one, click that one. There we go, we got plenty of shower heads. I'm gonna want a, I'm gonna want a door so they can get into the shower. I'm gonna cancel that one there. And we're gonna wanna build a wall. And there we go, now we have our little shower area. Zipping on by, we now have our shower complete, and we're just going to go at normal speed. And now our workers are putting away the supplies used to build this wall here. But you might notice something. All of these showers are flashing. They're flashing this water sign. And the reason they're doing that is because they need water. Now we have our power station here, but we're going to need a water pump. So we are going to go to utilities, water pump. We already have a water pump. We don't want a water pump too close to our electric generator to avoid fire. So we're just going to set it down right over here. And the water pump needs electricity, so we're going to bring a cable from our power generator to our pump. So to get water to our shower heads and to our toilets, we don't use cables, we use pipes. So to make sure everything has water, we put pipes under each of the facilities. So each shower head and each toilet should have a pipe underneath them. Then each of these pipes need to go to the water pump. However, the small pipes can only extend water for so long. The large pipes, however, have no real limits to how far the water they can take. So we're going to put a large pipe up to the edge of this building, and we're going to use small pipes to connect the pipes inside of the building to the large pipe. I highly recommend not putting large pipes inside of buildings for security reasons. If you've seen Shawshank Redemption, you should know what the reason is. Once these large pipes get built, we can see the water flowing from our pump through the pipes, and into the shower heads and into the toilets. Next, we're going to need a yard, and we're going to put our yard outside. So we're going to go to rooms, we're going to go to yard, and we're going to put it right next to this building here. We're going to make it the same size as our building, just for consistency's sake. There we go, this is our yard here. In order to make it more clear where the yard is, we can change the material of this yard. So we can go to materials, and we can actually change it. So we can make this yard stone. So we can have a nice stone surface for a yard. So this is where the prisoners will come and they will exercise in the yard. So we're going to make this stone. So I'm going to go over this, make it stone. And now we know where the yard begins and ends because it will be have this nice stone surface. And as the workers install it, we can see it has this nice mosaic stone appearance. We can do with each of these different 
surfaces. We have grass, we have sand, a gravel, dirt, concrete, wooden floor, tile. However, each of them have their own price, and some of them can only be used inside and some inside. Surfaces change the speed at which people walk over them. So for example, concrete tiles can be used inside and outside, and the people walking on these tiles will walk faster than if they're walking on grass or if they're walking on sand. Now there's a problem though. Looking at a yard, it says it meets the size requirements. It's at least five by five meters. However, it's not secure. It's not behind at least one door. And what this means is, imagine you're a prisoner in this yard. So you're hanging out in this yard, but you don't like being in prison, so you want to escape and you want to leave. Well, you could just walk out of the yard, go to the road, pick up a hitchhiker, and then leave. And there's nothing stopping you. And so in order to prevent that from happening, you're going to want to build a fence. Right here in the materials, we have fence. But we're just going to build a fence around our prison. There we go. Now, to allow people to come in and out of this prison, we're just going to put a door on this fence. Here we go. We're going to put a door on this fence. So our workers are going to build this fence, and prisoners will have to stay inside of this fence. If you do not build a fence, if you do not fence in your prison, those will cause a lot of problems. Guards will not allow prisoners into areas that are unsecure. So having any area of your prison that's unsecure will cause huge problems because they won't the prisoners won't be allowed to go anywhere. And we're almost done with our fence now. And there we go. Now that our fence is complete, our yard meets its requirements. So now the yard is secure because there's in this fence protecting it from prisoners walking out. Now I'd have to jump over this fence, but it's not easy because there's this barbed wire on top of it. That's not going to make it very easy. I don't like barbed wire. Next, we're gonna build a kitchen canteen. Now, prisoners love to eat. And in fact, they love it so much that if you don't let them eat, they'll destroy your prison and the people inside of it. So we're just gonna build a building. Now that we have our building base, we just need to get power into it. So we're just gonna extend this cable downward through this building. And while we're waiting for our workers to get power to it, we can designate the rooms. So the two rooms we want are canteen and kitchen. So we're going to put the kitchen at the bottom here, we're going to make it 9 by 7 We're going to put the canteen, we're going to leave, put it the rest of the space, and we're going to leave one room for a wall between them, so the prisoners can't go from the canteen to the kitchen. Now, for the canteen, the canteen is the place where the prisoners are going to eat. So this is the cafeteria. Now the prisoners need a place to get the food, and they need a place to eat the food at. And that's very simple, just a serving table to get the food, and then a table and bench to eat the food. So we go to objects, and we can see all highlighted here we have serving table, table, and bench. So we're going to put our saving table, we're going to put it right up against our wall here, our soon-to-be wall. Then we're going to put some tables and chairs. So we're going to put a table down, and then we can put two benches on either side. Put another table down, and we can put two benches on either side. And each bench can hold four prisoners, and Right now each table has a bench on either side, so that's two benches. So right now this is room for 16 prisoners. We can also put a bench on the side. They don't need to sit at a table in order to eat. They can eat anywhere they can sit down in the canteen. Now we're going to build this wall here and we're going to leave a spot for the door. But instead of putting an ordinary wooden door, we're going to put in a staff door. The difference between a staff door and a wood door, besides the cost, is that only staff or higher can go through a staff door. What that basically means is that prisoners can't go through a staff door because they don't have a key. But all workers, including guards, have a key. So we put the staff door down, we're basically saying prisoners are not allowed in the kitchen. Which is good because there's many knives and sharp things in the kitchen that we don't want prisoners to be able to take without us knowing it. Now in the kitchen we're going to need a cooker to cook the food, a fridge to store the fr um, food before we cook it, and a sink to clean the dishes. So we're going to put two cookers down, we're going to put two sinks down, and we're going to put four fridges down. And I left a little bit of room so we might expand our prison out in the future. 
And then just for good safety measures, we're gonna put a bin or a garbage can. We're gonna put a couple of garbage cans here. So when they throw away the trash from cooking the food, uh, you know, there's have a trash can for that. Our cookers have to be connected directly to this cable. That's, the cookers and the fridges are unique, that they need to be hooked up directly to these cables, versus lights, which don't have to be touching, they just have to be within the flow of the cables. And to finish up the sink, we just need to get some pipes going. And then we're going to build, we can extend our large pipe all the way from here down here. And you don't have to worry about electricity and water interfering with each other. They exist on different layers. So water exists on its layer, electricity exists on another layer. So I like to think that the water is two meters down and electricity is one meter down. So there's space between them so they don't intersect at all. That's it for the facilities necessary for the prison. However, there's one more thing we want to do. We need to hire some staff. And the staff we want are guards and cooks. We're going to want at least two guards so that we can satisfy the requirements for a basic detention center. But I recommend starting off with three or four, especially if you're early on. And you're going to want two cooks so we can meet this requirement for our grant. And there we go. Now that we completed all the requirements, we got $10,000 for completing that grant. And as you can see, our money went up by $10,000. So now we have a functional prison. We have a prison that we can have our prisoners sleep use the restroom, they can bathe, they can eat, and they can exercise. Well, they can't really exercise because we don't have any exercise equipment. We can fix that very easily though. We can just go to weights bench. We can just plop down some weights bench. And there we go. We have, what, nine, let's six weights bench. Let's just put nine down. There we go, nine workout benches. So now nine people can work out at once. And we can have twisting. It has power, it has, it has electricity, it has water, it has a nice, fence to protect the prisoners from escaping. We have some guards watching out. I think this is a very nice prison. That's it for the bare road basics for a prison in Prison Architect. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have a question, leave a comment down below. If you'd like to get notified for future videos I make, just feel free to subscribe. And I will see you in the next episode. Bye!